I don't even know how I'm gonna start this vlog. Like, I am completely speechless right now. Hi guys, I'm finally back in Shenzhen, but not for long. I'm actually at the airport right now, this beautiful airport. It's just absolutely stunning. And guess who's joining me? Jordan! From Travelite. Where? where? Uh. We always do this, and we're going to Beijing, so we will see you guys there. See you there. Before we go more into Beijing and exploring this awesome city, I want to first share why we're actually here in Beijing, us two together. It's because we got this amazing opportunity to work on a film project for this company called Career China. Basically what this company is asking us to do is help make a video to promote their recruitment process. So just kind of telling other expats what it's like living here in China and our first impressions of Beijing. And so far, I think it's absolutely amazing. What about you? Amazing. So they have a live interactive TV show that's for kids to teach English. Yeah, it's basically like Blue's Clues. It's cool to be part of this because we're out here exploring, but we're also doing something and helping other people. It's gonna help all future expats or just people coming to China in general and see a positive light about it. Anyways, let's go explore Beijing. So one of the first things we did in Beijing is go to the Lama Temple. This temple is absolutely breathtaking. A combination of Han Chinese and Tibetan styles. It was built back in the 1600s during the Qing Dynasty and was actually intended to be a residence of Emperor Yang Jing. After the death of his father, he moved to the Forbidden City and the building was actually converted to a temple. His successor then converted it again into a lamasery to host large numbers of monks from Mongolia and Tibet. really peaceful to walk around. I actually feel like I'm talking a little bit too loud because you can pretty much just hear everybody's footsteps. It's also not as touristy as you might think. Actually, when we were there, it was mostly locals coming to pray. It is believed that if you pray in this temple, the Buddha will help you fulfill your wishes. So naturally, lots of Buddhists come here and burn joysticks in front of Buddha. These joysticks are given to you freely before walking in, so everyone has the chance to participate. There are also Tibetan prayer reels. These are used to accumulate wisdom and good karma, as well to actually purify your bad karma. You must spin the wheel clockwise, as it's the movement of the sun across the sky. This is definitely a must-see temple if you come to Beijing. It's a great place to get a sense of culture and beauty, as well as a place you can visit on a sunny or rainy day. Woo! I need some air. This vlog has gotten a little bit serious, but it is important to know what you're looking at when you're visiting something like this. Anyway, later that night, I got the opportunity to try Peking duck for the first time. I didn't realize that when you eat Peking duck, you're only eating the skin. You're not eating the meat within the duck. And that just has so much flavor. It's so crispy. Oh my gosh, it was so good. The restaurant even let us go behind the scenes and see the duck being prepared. The guy even almost hit me with the iron rod that he's cooking the duck on. Peking duck is a traditional dish of Beijing, so everyone should try it. And I did, and it was awesome. Another important thing to do when you visit Beijing is to go to the Forbidden City. However, we have been walking around for probably an hour just trying to figure out how to get into the Forbidden City and people keep sending us this way and then that way and this way and that way. And it's a big place. But we finally figured it out. The Forbidden City, the name has actually changed to the Palace Museum and you have to have a passport to buy your ticket. So, we're screwed. We didn't want to mope around, so we got on one of those really cool bicycle car ride things. I don't know what they're called, but it was super fun. Yeah! Yeah! <laughs> Look at us, like, what? I think yeah. they're too surprised to react. And hey, he said hi. Yeah! Oh, no, she Another awesome and unexpected adventure was finding Beihai Park. Now, I've visited many parks around the world and they're always kind of the same thing. They're great, they're peaceful, they're fun to hang out with friends and have a picnic or whatever you want to do. But this park literally blew my mind. Dude. Whoa. 
totally worth the 10 quai. As soon as I walked Oh my god. Past, I turned, I looked at the ticket she gave me back and then I looked out and I was like, whoa. Dude, my mouth literally just dropped. It was rich in pastel colors, so peaceful, beautiful scenery. I don't even think the footage I have of this is gonna do this park justice. It was just the feelings I had and Jordan as well. We were just very blown away by this park. Later that night, I looked up the story of this park and I found out that there's this old legend that just kind of made the whole experience even better for me. And it goes a little something like this. Once upon a time, there were three magic mountains in the sea to the east of China. Gods in each mountain had the power to give humans eternal life. In search for immortality, many emperors in China sent expeditions to find these three mountains and their gods. But nobody succeeded. When the first emperor of the Qin Dynasty failed, he decided to imitate the legend on his own land. He ordered his people to dig a large pool. In the pool, his people built three hills just like the magic mountains, in hopes of finding immortality. Through the beliefs of ancient Chinese architecture, people believed that different combinations of water and earth would create different effects. So, from then on, almost every succeeding emperor will build a royal garden with one pool and three hills near his palace to resemble the magic mountains. Beihai Park was built following this legend. Thank you, Natalia, for recommending me to come here. I just follow her on Instagram, she follows me back, never met her, but gave me a list of suggestions to go in Beijing, and this is just breathtaking. Cheers. 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 Another traditional dish to have in Beijing is hot pot. So what are we eating? Hot pot. Now, I didn't realize I've never had hot pot before, but oh my gosh, it was even better than the Peking duck. We joined our friends again. They showed us how to make the sauce for hot pot, and guess who joined us for dinner? And she's here. She's here. Lady Gaga has joined us for dinner. There's two of them. They are. Which one's the real one? You literally had to take your chopsticks and undress her to get the meat off her body and eat it. That's awesome. I also tried the typical Chinese rice wine, baiju. That stuff is very strong. 46% of alcohol and it's Chinese, Chinese moonshine. Chinese moonshine. <laughs> I think that's all I have to say for this video. I have a lot more videos coming for you guys from Beijing because it was just an amazing experience and very unexpected. I honestly can't believe that was Beijing. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed. Remember to subscribe and I'll see you next time. Bye.